Brilliant. So, okay. <laughs> I was going to leave the meeting, but I said, I figured I might as well have got it. You could leave. No, that's okay. I'm here. I'm here for you guys. Thank you. All right. So everybody, welcome to the call. Go ahead, if you don't mind, and mute your end. Just double check because I'm seeing some people who are unmuted. And I can go through and do that, but sometimes I have to scroll through. So, um, you know what? I got that 805 number. Um, all right, great. So, uh, first of all, thank you to Tennessee Soccer Referee Program for putting this on. Obviously, uh, my name is Leland Grant, and I am the director of the Tennessee Referee Academy. And this is our continuing education webinar series. Tonight, we are featuring um, my good friend Lance Van Heitsma from Florida, unfortunately, but everything else about him is, is very fortunate. So currently he is CONCACAF, Manager of Referees, and NISOA, Director of Operations. Super exciting. I've known Lance for a long time, and we've been discussing uh, off the air for a while, different clips as we always do, and a few things were coming up about handballs. And Lance and I were discussing it. And he says, man, I just should come in and do a course about handball. And I said, that'd be great. So here we are. Uh, Lance, if you want to take it away, also I can make you the host. And that way you can screen share. Um, here we go. I'll make co-host. And there you go. And again, everybody, there's an 805-624-9977. Sorry to announce your number, but if you go ahead and mute, please, that would be awesome. Um, and Lance, you are co-host, so if you want to take it away, brother, go ahead. All right, let's do it. Thanks, Leland. First of all, uh, thank you everybody for joining tonight. I know it's not the easiest to join on a Monday night. Uh, most people think Monday nights are the easiest because, you know, there isn't a whole lot going on, but typically after a long weekend of working matches or being away from your family, Monday nights are typically those family nights. So, uh, those of you that are in attendance, I really do appreciate you joining us. I will try to keep this to no more than one hour, hopefully 45 minutes, because I know based on my history, if, when you start to go too long, people start to either tune you out or they start to do other things. So without further ado, we're going to get to we're going to get to handball. Uh, Leland's been trying to get me on, I think, for probably over a year now. Um, and our schedules just have never worked out. Either one was available and one wasn't, uh, or we both, both weren't available. So I'm really glad to be here to share my expertise with you uh, regarding the, the easy topic of handball, right? Because anytime it hits the hand, what do the coaches and the players yell? That's a handball, that's a handball. So uh, it's, it's very easy. Anytime it hits the hand, it's a handball, right? And then you have to explain to them why it's not a handball. And that's where it gets to the tricky part. So it's really important that we utilize our considerations. The considerations for handball are our guideline. They're what provides us the, 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 the pathway to getting the correct decision, being able to analyze the, the, the situation and be able to provide the correct decision on it. They're also very, very important in order to explain yourself, right? When you need to give a clarification or a quick explanation to a player or an explanation to a coach, especially towards the end of the game when his team is, he or she's team is down a goal and the ball just hit the hand of the defender inside the penalty area. Um, you know, you need to have the courage, you need to have the confidence in knowing the considerations in order to get the correct decision, but as well as be able to communicate that decision. Um, so we're gonna get right into it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to share my screen, but I'm gonna share it where we're gonna have a whiteboard. Those of you that are not familiar with Zoom, the Zoom whiteboard feature. So what I'm gonna do is, you can either tell me in the chat Actually, no, I can't see the chat. So you're going to have to tell me, oh, I can see the chat. You're going to have to tell me what are your considerations? What are the considerations for handball? So if you want to just sit here in the chat and type away, 
feel free if you want to unmute yourself and talk, you may do that as well. But if you're going to unmute yourself, please say your name before you give the answer. Um, this is Alexis. Um, I guess the first consideration is, uh, is the hand moving towards the ball or is the ball moving towards the hand? Very good. Movement, we call that additional movement of the arm. Very good. Is it toward the ball or making itself smaller? Okay. How about another one? It was very good. Hi, this is Josh. Um, one other consideration I take in is, um, is it a natural position or unnatural, like within the silhouette or without? Natural position. Explain to me what you mean by the silhouette and what you mean by natural position. Yeah, is it a natural football movement? And with your silhouette, is it kind of tucked into the body instead of out? Is it flopping around or is it like when they're set for a free kick, is it tucked into their side? Is what I'm talking about with the silhouette. You just, you just, that's excellent. And I'm going to write silhouette here. Okay, the silhouette that's expected for that play. Right, because as you mentioned, you're on a, if you have a free kick, right, your hands may be down to your side within your natural plane of your body, as opposed to if you're in a defensive position while you're running, your hand may be in a natural running position. Even though people may say it's away from your body, but it's a normal running position, okay? That's within your plane. So it's very good. Next, anybody else? Let me check the chat. Nothing in the chat yet. How about, how about we get two more? Um, I was just gonna say, is the ball hitting his hand from a short or a long distance? Very good, proximity. From the ball. Very good, which is falls into reaction time, correct? All right, and one more. Supporting yourself from a fall. I see deliberate. Okay, I see a couple now in the chat. We got the chat is active. So we've got deliberate, meaning. How about this one? Goal scored from handball. We have unintentional or we have accidental. Okay. Lance, as, as you're typing those, I, I just want to make a note to everybody. Th this call is, a, these calls are super safe places, okay? So we always say this, guys. If you're thinking something, if you, if you want to ask a question, You've got one of the best resources in the world here, okay? Uh, this guy oversees CONCACAF referees. He's the man. So this is a great place to ask it. And there's no judgment. There's no wrong answers. Nobody's going to – you're not going to get taken off a game if you ask some question that you think is silly because the odds are if you're thinking it, is thinking it too. So just wanted to mention that. Sorry to interrupt you, buddy. That's all right. That's all right. This is good. This is just to get the, the brain juices flowing here, have us start thinking about uh, handball and our considerations that we use for handball. Another one somebody mentioned was football understanding. Okay. Football understanding is extremely important for us to determine whether or not it's, it's a handball uh, offense. Additionally, we have a couple others here. We have, we have hit, we have, how about, Deliberate play from self and teammate, right? If it's a deliberate play from yourself and then it hits your hand, or it's a deliberate play from a teammate then hits your hand, remember, it's not a handball. And we're going to go into some video uh, examples of these considerations right here. So get one last one in the chat. 
if the ball hits a body part before it hits the hand, right? Remember, it has to be a deliberate play. That has to be deliberate. If it's accidental or it's a block, remember that's considered a deflection, right? Deflection, deliberate versus deflection. Very similar to how we determined um, offside. Was it a deliberate play or was it a deflection, right? It's the same thing here when it's coming from yourself or from a teammate. So we're gonna go ahead and get into some of these. First off, are there any questions about considerations for handball? We pretty much got them all here. You know, we've got football understanding, we got the additional movement, we've got, and I'll show you my other screen to share with you. Right, right from the FIFA platform. Because you can see here, you've got a football understanding, which we had clear, we had additional movement, we had taking a risk or making the body bigger, right? Supporting arm when you're going to the ground. We have attacker handball concept, which is when it's a, an accidental handball that results into an immediate goal, a goal scoring, okay? And then we have some exceptions to the law that we started to mention about deliberate play and uh, when it comes from a teammate. We're not gonna get into VAR line of intervention because it doesn't apply to the, the matches that we do. Unfortunately, we have to, we only get one chance, we get one look at it and we have to get it right the first time. And if we're not gonna get it right the first time, we have to sound like we got it right the first time, okay? Cause that's going to, um, that's going to get us out of trouble later on. So you must know these considerations. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through a clip. We're gonna go through some clips. We're gonna show a clip. Then we're gonna ask you in the chat for your answer, whether it's handball or no handball. And then I'm gonna choose on somebody or, or we can have a volunteer to uh, discuss their considerations for their answer. Okay, so here we go. There's a replay. I got no. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the point of contact. Right there. Right there. All right. In the chat, and don't listen to Leland. In the chat, go ahead and put handball or no handball. No. And use your considerations. Okay. All right. I think we pretty much have quite a few. Most people are saying no handball. And we have a, a, a handful that are saying handball. So Let's go ahead and get the first person that responded to no handball was Matthew George. Matthew George, if you could unmute yourself, if you're able to, and, and tell us what are your considerations for no handball here? Uh, I was just going to say no handball because it looked like he was going to try to use his body to hit it, like his chest, and then it hit his arm. Okay. So he was attempting to use his chest, but then it hit his arm. Let's see it again. All right, so he turns his body, you're saying? Originally he was gonna hit his chest, but then he turns his body and then it hits his arm? 
notes are okay. Good. Anybody on the anybody on the handball team? Actually, let's get one more no handball so that way we can have a we can we can cover all of our bases here. James Wiseman. Deflection. Come up ahead. Player. Part of the reason I have no handball is because of the time that he has to react to the deflection off of the attacker's head as well. Okay, so that it was a reaction. Okay, so in your opinion, it was a reactive, reactive movement. All right, okay. Now let's get the handball people. Let's start with Eduardo Mason. I said no handball because um, in having his position, his arm position in that way, he's taking a risk and making his body a bit unnaturally bigger. Okay, his body's unnaturally bigger. So you say this is a handball? Yes. Okay. No, right. And let's have Charles, since I see you on screen and I see your answer. Go ahead and mute yourself. Um, I, I couldn't quite tell whether it hit his upper arm or lower arm. If it hit his upper arm, I, I would say no handball. If it hit his lower arm, I said, it, I'd say he's making himself bigger. Okay. Thank you. So you'll see in this, I tried to do a still shot. I tried to pause it when it hits the point of contact, right? So the point of contact is right in the middle of the palm. So as you all were mentioning, Tough to see. Does the ball come from a, a short distance or a long distance here? Comes from a long distance, right? It comes from a corner kick. So there's no, so the, the defender is able to see this ball from the moment it's kicked. The only issue you have, as some of you mentioned, where it takes I got the problem with the deflection off the head. Mm -hmm. Because so, once it comes off the head, that guy don't have any idea where that ball's going. So let me ask you this, and that's correct, right? It does take a deflection off the head. But is that a natural defending position by the defender? No, but uh, he's trying to get – it looks like to me he's trying to kind of get away from the ball too. So – Good, because a lot of times defenders will try to make themselves smaller, right? And they're, they'll move their arm to their body in order to make themselves smaller. So like, for example, if it hits his hand that's closest to the defender, is that hand close to the body or is that hand away from the body? Yeah. Right? The hand that's nearest to the defender is close to the body. It's within the natural plane silhouette that's expected for this play. Whereas if the hand's away, the, 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 the hand it hits, that hand is extended away from the body. Okay, it's extended away from the body. Why is it extended away from the body? It's there to take up space, right? It's there to prevent the ball from going through. So it's a little bit unfortunate for that defender because it's possible that he wasn't expecting this play because of the, def of, of the deflection from the attacking player. But at the same time, is that doesn't give that defending player an out, okay? Doesn't give them an out. Doesn't give them an excuse of why they can have their hand extended away from the body like this into their advantage, all right? So before we move on, I know Brandon Will had his hand raised and while I was in the middle of my, uh, my explanation of why this is a handball. So Brandon, did you want to add anything to it? Yeah, Lance, you basically explained, you can hear me, yeah? Yes. You basically explained everything. All the other considerations are great, but 
as soon as you see this player's arm that is closer to the ball, the one he has less time to move tucked in, and the one that has maybe a split second longer to make a movement is out, gives it away immediately. And I would say uh, heads up to all players, this move, if, if he would have stayed straight on face, maybe not a handball, right? As soon as he turns sideways, he kills his silhouette. So Absolutely. spinning sideways to get out of the way of a ball, watch your arms because you kill your silhouette. You make your silhouette basically a line. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Great, great addition here. And it's tough too, as referees, when we're watching this, when you, when you look at this referee's position, this referee has a good position here. But because this position is more straight on, you're not seeing that silhouette plane as you would when, if, you're, if he was over to his left, more towards the corner of the, the D and the, the top of the penalty area. You would have a little bit more of a plane to know that that arm is extended out. So when we're in the penalty area, when we're, whether it's a corner kick, whether it's a set piece free kick, whether it's dynamic play, we as, a, we as referees have to be dynamic. We have to be the ones that are continuously moving to try to find the optimal angle of view where we can correctly judge whether or not a foul has occurred or whether or not a handball offense has occurred, okay? So in this case, it was very difficult to see during the live clip. And it really took for me to freeze frame this for you to show you that this, the defender's arm is outstretched when in fact it should be closer to the body, like his one nearest to him, right? So this is a handball. We're gonna show a couple more examples. And I think the more examples you see, handball is one of these offenses that the more you see, the better you get at it, okay? But continue to use the considerations that we are discussing here, okay? So let's go to the next one. Let me slide up. Okay, let me show you again. It's a small clip, short clip, I mean. All right. So go ahead and put in the chat, handball or no handball. As we take this time for my sponsor, Sam and Zoe's Coffee, Nashville, Tennessee. Sam and Zoe's, thanks you. Double seat. So far, it's been a uh, unanimous consensus here. Of no handball. I see no handball arm in supporting position. Okay, so let me ask Fernando Pena. Fernando, go ahead and mute yourself and Talk us through your considerations here of why this is supporting arm. Can you hear me? Perfect. Uh, so the defender sliding. So it's an, it's natural for the player to brace themselves as they're coming down, and that's when the ball seems to hit. Is he seems to make a second movement after the fact? If he does that before the ball hits it, then it would be considered deliberate. But is as you can see right here where you paused it, his hand is down. It, that's natural for what he's doing at the moment. So therefore I have no handball. Very good, very good. Supporting arm, his, heart, his arm is down to his side. In the past, what was it, about two, three years ago, they would say, if you're sliding, you're taking a risk. That's what, um, that was the word from FIFA. If you're sliding, you're taking a risk. Handball is one of these uh, offenses that continues, continues to evolve into being, we try to make it more defined and more fair to the players and fair to the game. So in this case, you are correct. The ball is, to, the arm is to the side, right? It is close to the body. There is, 
there's a second movement, but it's not till after the ball hits the arm when it's nearest to the body. So therefore, this is no handball. And additionally, if you want to talk about the you want to talk about the referee's positioning here too. As an added point here, look at the referee. The referee is in great position to determine that the hand was in a supporting position with no additional movement when it originally hit the hand. So this is excellent officiating by the referee. Are there any questions on this? Well, we're gonna have another one of supporting arm because not all supporting arms are no handballs, okay? So I just wanna make that clear. But in this case, because the arm was nearest to the body, there was no second or an additional movement to the ball. All right, so this would be considered no handball. Get to the next one here. All right, put it in the chat. Matt George just said, what just happened? So let me replay that one more time because it's probably choppy on your end. I can kind of narrate it. The Flamingo player, midfielder that's tracking back, comes and deliberately kicks the ball. Or kicks the ball into his own defender's arm so it's a teammate okay it's a teammate so do we have a handball or do we have no handball it's like do we have no handball or do we have a penalty kick I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing everybody put no handball. All right. So Joey Snyder, tell me, tell me what are your considerations for your answer of no handball? So the reason I said no handball was because his hand is in a natural position. And after he gets hit, he realized, so he moves his arm back. Tell me he realized and just reacted to that, but he was in completely natural position. His hand wasn't blocking or making any movement to hit that ball, he was just in that position normal. Okay, good. Let's add to your answer with Jessica. Yeah, for me, I have no handball because I saw the distance between the two players and I did not see that he had any really reaction time to react to that ball. Okay, no reaction time, arm in a natural position. What else here? There's, a, there's a, a very, very critical consideration here that will bail you out. The ball comes from a teammate, right? So, and I, I don't know how to say it, but like the teammate deliberately plays it, but <laughs> it's the person who encounters it with a hand, that's unintentional. And why would, why would the teammate have handled the ball when it comes from uh, or why would the you know white defender handle the ball when it comes from his own teammate? So I think there needs to be some language around that. Absolutely, and that and that's that's the main consideration for this clip. It's it's played by a teammate. It's played by a teammate that kicks the ball into the defending teammate. 
okay? Defending to, even if his hand was sticking out like that and it, he, he braces for it, fact of the matter is it's kicked by a teammate, you know? Why would, why would somebody handle the ball if it's kicked by your own teammate like this in a defending position when he's not expecting it, right? We're not talking an attacking player down the field that's, you know, that's looking to gain an advantage. Like here, this is clearly, clearly, clearly non-deliberate because it came from a, defend, a teammate, okay? So in this case, no handball. But at the same time, is as a referee, you have to expect the unexpected here. Nobody expected the, the defender that was coming back to kick the ball into his own teammate, right? So when you've seen a defending players or midfielders tracking back to get involved and disrupt play, you have to be thinking that this could be a possibility for you. So you, you can't let your guard down. You can't get caught off guard. You have to expect the unexpected. Otherwise, you're going to think that it's going to be the red player kicking the ball into the white player if you're not focused. And then you're going uh, to incorrectly penalize the white team with, uh, by, by penalty kick, which we know could determine the outcome of the match. Okay, so very good. Everybody, everybody had no handball here. It's easy, right? Handball is easy. Hey, hey Lance. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Chuck Kronitsky, a.k.a. Charles. Um, and I have a question for you. Is, is this interpretation or, as a, or this use, this consideration of it come, being kicked by a teammate, is that something that's relatively new? Uh, I, I try to stay up on the considerations and the copy I have doesn't really mention that, but what if the guy was down in the goal area and this same thing were to happen? Would he be in maybe be preventing a goal or something like that? With obviously it would be a, a different interpretation for a different reason, I guess. But you could you could create a situation where the same thing were to happen, but he'd be a little closer to goal and it would be a handball. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, so I I guess the question is, is have they updated the considerations to include this information about it coming from a teammate? So my question to you, yes. And this was in 2021. Oh, wow. So this was the previous edition of the, they're, they're, I say the previous edition because they're going to be coming out with a new edition here um, very, very shortly regarding handball. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the handball does not, uh, the considerations are not changing for the 2022 edition, except for when there's a, a goalkeeper involved. Um, but yeah, deliberately touching or, you know, the ball being played last played by the, uh, a, a teammate in this case. Okay. I'll check my list. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Also too, the, be the best thing too, is I don't know if you have the hard copy of the laws of the game or if you, cause a lot of the times the hard copies are, are very tough to get. Um, but having, I highly recommend everybody download the app. IFAB has an app on their, uh, for the phone that makes everything very, very easy to search for. Uh, it's, it's nice to have it out at the field that you can look at at halftime if you're trying to find something. Um, so I highly recommend being able to uh, utilize that for, the, uh, for your own knowledge. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. So let's go to the and, next. Well, yes. Lance, actually, building off of Chuck's question, if this does happen on the goal line and, you know, White's about to accidentally score a goal and number 13 sticks his hands out and prevents dog so, we just use our dog so considerations, right? We're, or no. Like, I think, Chuck, I think that that's kind of where you were going with your question, right? It was a, a part of my question. My first, yes, it was, if, if this same thing were to happen down in front of the goal line, um, would it be dog so the handling? That was so if, if, if you were to take this same exact situation, right? Take yeah. this same exact situation and you put the defending player down at the goal line, right? When his yeah. teammate has kicked the ball into him. Accident yeah, accidentally. Yeah, we can just right? misplace it. Yeah. Right. No handball. Okay. okay. No handball here. Okay. Now, 
if he kicks the ball and the defending player then realizes the ball is going in and he puts his arm up. Sure. Sure. Like deliberately, deliberately sure. plays it. Okay. Yeah. Now we're talking a little bit, you know, we're talking a different scenario here. Got it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lance, just to be clear, I, I thought this was no handball because I thought his arm was basically, it looks a little suspect in this particular photo. Mm -hmm. I thought when I saw it live that it was in a natural position. So I thought it was no handball, but as I listened to your explanation, I'm picking up on this coming from a teammate as being the primary consideration. And I, I just didn't know that was shame on me, but I didn't know that was an actual consideration. Um, but I do now. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It doesn't happen often. Like, and that's, and this is the part where it kind of catches us off guard because this doesn't happen very often. Um, I think probably in my short career, I can probably count on one hand uh, how many times this has happened to me. So it doesn't happen often. And if we're caught uh, unprepared or if we're caught uh, unfocused or not knowing our considerations, then we're going to be uh, in, a, in a more difficult position uh, and you know could potentially out, uh, impact the outcome of the game. So it's good. Surely the proximity of the teammate takes in consideration. Um, yes and no. I mean, proximity is not in the our consideration here, but as you can tell that you know the defending player is not making himself bigger, not making a second action towards the ball. You know, those are the considerations we use when, when determining this. Johnny Joseph, hand raised. Yes. Hi, uh, Lance. How are you doing? Great. Um, How are you? I'm good. Thank you. If, if you look at the language in the IFAB book, they deleted all the exceptions for, hand, for handling. You know, except for the above offenses, it's not an offense if the ball touches a player's hand slash arm. From and it listed four or five different situations. Can you speak to that? Because I thought that was pretty good in terms of clarifying. Um, specifically, I don't have the law in front of me. Um, what page are you talking about? I'm talking about page 159. Um, this is the section where it goes through the law changes and shows the, the deletions and additions. So it had directly from the player's own head or body, directly from the head or body, including the foot of another player who is close. If the hand arm is close to the body and does not make the body unnaturally bigger, when a player falls and the hand arm is between the body and the ground, to support the body. So I, I thought these were pretty good, you know, clarifications and um, considerations to use but, but they took it out yeah they they took it out because they don't like to use the term like unnaturally bigger um it's kind of difficult at times to determine what is natural and what is unnatural um so that's why they're trying to utilize more considerations consider, consideration based um to have more uniformity right having more uniformity in this because by by trying to uh condense they're trying to make it a little bit easier in terms of being able to get the guidelines and to be able to uh correctly punish or correctly not punish um you know it's handballs that that uh that offense where it's very uh you know objective at times or subjective at times and, you know, they're trying to figure out a way from all the way to the top, the FIFA World Cup referees to all the way at the uh, towards the bottom of the pyramid, the grassroots referees to have some sort of common language where they can everybody can determine what a handball offense is. Now, as you mentioned, they're trying to clean up the laws of the game. They're trying to make the wording appropriate. So it's very, very important that you, that we all um, stay up on the laws. It's great that you all are reading the laws, um, you know, having, having copies of the laws and going through it. Because when you go through the laws of the game, you're always learning something different. You're always, I always find things in the laws of the game that are different than I thought it was. 
So it's always good to be using the laws of the game to do it. So let's move to the next, next clip. I got a couple more clips I wanna show you um, to go through this real quickly. This one's a little bit longer clip, but I'll fast forward through it. All right, I don't think we need to see much more than that. Let me play it from the beginning. We're gonna show a replay. Then you're gonna tell me in the chat, handball or no handball? All right. Handball or no handball? Handball. Handball for me. Couple more people. And a lot of handballs here, a lot of handballs. Nobody's brave to say no handball, huh? Like the referee did in this case. <laughs> I just got a problem with the hand sticking straight up there. So talk to me about it. Uh, I, I know he's trying to get away from it, but that hand's way out there away from the body. You know, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Would you say it's taking up space? Definitely. Definitely, right? What if it what if it were to hit the hand that's closest to the body? Uh, I don't know about that one. So th that one you'd be leaning towards that that would be a more of a natural position, right? Yeah, because he's he's you know, he he's got the it's hand next to the thing. body, he's trying to get away from it. But that one there with that hand stuck straight out like that, it's hard to not call that. Anybody else want to add to it? This is Patricio Avendano. The other hand is in the silhouette of the player, so it wouldn't mm -hmm. be a handball to me. Correct. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. So his right arm is in an unnatural position. It's there to take up space, make the body bigger, right? Whereas the, the left arm is tucked into the body, making himself smaller, right? So that should be a clear sign that this player is making himself bigger, making himself bigger. Now, what else about this play? So we know this is a handball. Everybody sees it, okay? So do we have anything else with this? Is there anything else to talk about? It's a shot. Right, so it's a handball shot. So it's the shots are always promising attacks. Good. So talk to me about your promising attack. What what do we? How do we penalize? Well, it has to be. This will be a yellow card. Yellow card. Okay. What if the uh, player already has a yellow card? You give him a second one. 
Um, yes, I will. Good. I was a test for you. <laughs> this is an easy one. <laughs> right. This is this is the run. Right. It's a shot on goal. I see somebody says, "Well, possible dog." So, well, not really, because we have some other defenders there. We have a goalkeeper in the net. Um, you know, so it wouldn't be a pos, wouldn't be a dog. So, but it is a shot on goal. And it's something that we need to, we need to train ourselves if we already haven't, is that if you have a handball that stops a shot on goal, we must give a yellow card. Okay. That's where we punish with the yellow card. All right. So even if it's their first one, first yellow card, even if it's their second yellow card, we still punish here. We still punish, whether it's a a penalty, penalty kick or not, if it's a shot on goal and it's a handball offense, we punish with a yellow card. Lance, is the reason why that the initial touch, is the initial touch by the first screen defender considered a deflection, not deliberate play? The, the, the foot sticking out? I guess I, I guess I, when I watched it, I had assumed that the ball had hit the foot and then it hit the hand. Let's take a look here. Let me see if we can sit the VAR feed. Let me see if we can get the VAR feed here. So it appears, I don't even know if it touches. Okay. The other yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I was, I guess I was inferring that that was part of the clip. Right. And even if it is touching, right, this is a, a block right? It's not a deliberate play. By the defender who's sliding. That's who right. we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Right. So you got the arm in an unnatural position, right? Attempting to take up space, making themselves unnatural, uh, making themselves unnaturally bigger. And this is the best angle probably to see it. Because he actually extends his arm to make himself bigger, right? And the referee then appropriate, appropriately awards penalty kick. And he does give a yellow card too. Lance, could I ask a question about the dog? So option, you were talking earlier about defenders being back there. You mentioned um, that there was also a keeper in the net. Um, could you not have dog so handling if the keeper was in the net? If the keeper was in the net? You, you mentioned that there were defenders back there. Well, it, it, it depends, right? Because if you have the goalkeeper, if the goalkeeper's on, like, for example, if this play is much closer to goal, much closer to goal, right? And the goalkeeper is in the net between the, the frame of the goal, but outside of the frame of where the shot is going to be taken, where the shot is being taken and where the shot is going, then that's where you have more of a dog soap situation that could occur. That makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, so like the further out you get, the less likely that dog so is going to happen from a handball. But the closer you get to goal, the probability starts to increase. But it, you have to take in consideration where the shot is being, you know, where the shot is going. Where is the goalkeeper in relation to the, the shot and those type of things. And, and in reality, the referee is the one who can, who's going to be the one to determine this. Because the assistant referee is going to have inside or outside the penalty area. Assistant referee is not going to really have a plain view the, in terms of the, the plane of the player, whereas the referee is going to be the one with the best one to judge this, this action. So in this case, we were correct. Penalty kick, yellow card. And we didn't need VAR to see it. I'm going to get you a couple more clips here. We're starting to get to our time. All right, so let's talk about this one. What do we got here? 
put in the chat, handball, no handball. And if you say no handball, tell me why. If you say handball, tell me why. What's your consideration? And not because the referee called it. Or the referee doesn't call it. So it's tough for me to pause. All right, get the first one. I got two people say handball, and I got 30 people that are undecided. <laughs> uh, Lance, is it safe to assume that that ball hit that guy's arm when it was stretched out on the ground? Yes. Okay. Seeing everybody say handball. Nobody agrees with the referee, the FIFA referee. All right, Johnny Joseph. Yes, sir. Tell me, tell me what you got. Tell me what you got and why. So I see the defender sliding on the ground and his hand coming up above his body and stopping the ball or interfering with the ball in flight. On top, he doesn't get the exemption of the hand breaking the fall to the ground. Made okay. himself bigger, interfered with the path of the ball. Okay, good. Anybody like to add anything? This is one of those where you could penalize for what he does by raising that arm up there. Let's see, which arm does it hit? The one that's raised or the one that's on the ground? I thought it got the one that was raised. So this one, this one hits the one on the ground. Oh, okay. Well, I, makes, no, I, I wasn't right here. Which makes it more difficult for us to judge. Yeah, it's it, it does it so fast there in your video that I can't really tell which, which one it got. I thought it got the upper one. See if I can freeze freeze frame it. Is I guess is there a consideration that this arm isn't functioning as a support arm, but is in fact help helping to make his body bigger as he goes to ground in a slide? Like uh, the he's not falling, he's sliding. Is that yes, absolutely. That's that's the perfect way to sum it up. He's not falling, he's sliding. If he if he falls. Like the other clip we showed, right? The other clip was the player was falling and the ball hits the support arm. In this case, when the ball, when his arm hits the ground, it it's the support arm. But now he's sliding toward the ball, right? He's making a second movement, a second action with his arm. He's making himself unnaturally bigger. So in this case, we would punish for handball, just like everybody in the chat said. And this George is Turner the says his hand is not close to the body and it's extended out, right? It's outside of the, you know, the plane, the plane. Like if you were to stand and you were to fall right now, if you were to stand up and you were to fall down, that gives you the idea of where that, that supporting arm should be. But when you're sliding, this is where we talk about you're sliding. Now he's taking a risk by sliding that has support arm is now becoming part of his body or it's, it becomes unnaturally bigger. Yeah, this is a huge risk and a timing thing on the defender. He got beat. This is how he's trying to make up for it. Whenever that attacker kicks that ball, wherever that support arm was or wasn't, we got to make a decision. That's his risk. Absolutely. Lance, this is Chuck again. The difference I see is that in the earlier clip, the ball, the arm was actually supporting the body. It was vertically under the body. This one is extended horizontally away. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's 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 the that's the main consideration here, right? Like, it's not 
the arm is not vertical at this point. When the ball hits the arm, the arm is horizontal when it hits the arm, when the ball hits the arm. Excellent. All right. Nice to have VAR. All right, in the chat. Might look a little blurry to you, but that's because it is. It's not your vision. Get that hand stuck straight out there again. Mm. I need I need some more people. I see. I'm gonna call on Lauren Gray. Lauren Gray, tell me what you have and why. Maybe Lauren Gray is away from her area. How about Lila? I'll be honest with you. I'm in my car right now. I'm listening and I don't have the video. Okay. Okay. No worries. We I'm don't sorry. want you to. I'm... Yeah, no, sorry. I just finished the game and I literally just jumped on, but I don't have the video right now. No problem. We don't want you to be uh, trying to watch the video and drive at the same time anyway. So no worries there. Appreciate you jumping on. You're all good. How about Mark Rivera? Can you hear me? Yep, can hear you. Yeah, I just I'm think her, arm, her arm's way out there, you know? I mean, how, how can you not call that a handball? So arm is extended away from her body? Way out there. All right. So she's making herself bigger. She's creating she a big, barrier. Looks way bigger to me. Looks like an airplane. <laughs> she's creating a barrier on the goal side I, I mean I, I just can't imagine not calling that a handball All right and if you see the referee's position there very difficult for the referee to see this very difficult almost impossible there's a body in front of them body uh -huh. she's looking through players the arms ex extended out but that's the arm that's kind of away from her away from the referee's uh angle so who has to step up here mark and make this Make this make this decision after looking at the referee first. The, the AR. Absolutely. The AR has the assistant referees have to have the courage to make this call. Yeah, Whether I can see it. I can see it great because I, I'm in the AR's position right here. Mm -hmm. I got headsets on. It looks like she's talking to either the AR or the BAR one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You have to, the assistant referee, if you're wearing headsets, has to communicate this. Or you know, or follow what's in the pregame, pregame instructions. But ultimately, the assistant referee needs to be the one to insist because of the referee's poor angle of view or poor, you know, not really poor, but um, the referee's inability to see this um, offense. Yeah, yeah, the referee, the referee probably couldn't even see the contact. 
Yeah, it looks like there's another player in between the referee and the actual player that got the handball or got the hand out there. Let's take a look. Yep. Are you? Referee starts thinking it was going to be a turnover and got caught. All right. But when the ball takes that, that flight that it did, that should be some sort of feeling you have in your stomach that, mm, that hit something. I'm not sure what it hit, but that hit something. That was not a clean cross. So the, that's where the assistant referee needs to come in. This is a good angle right here. Hey, Lance. Yeah. No, don't mean to put you on the spot. So if you don't have a good answer, that's great. But in our games, we don't have comms. Mm -hmm. and you mentioned pregame. So AR insisting to the ref that this is a handball, it's a penalty kick. Mm -hmm. a critical match incident that you're letting the AR decide. Um, so is how... How does that work in our game, uh, that commu that trust, to trust your AR to make this critical call? And, and the AR to trust the referee that this insistence will go through? It's, we, we only, our team is only four people, probably three people in the games we do locally. That's all we have, three people. And we have to trust and empower one another that if, if these situations occur, that you have to step up for the game. You step up for the referee, your referee team, but you're also going to step up and do what's right for the game. So in this case, if you, an assistant referee on a local game, and you see this happen, this outstretched arm, and the ball hit the arm, and you look to the referee first to make eye contact, and the referee is not in a position to call it, you must put the flag up here. You must put the flag up to indicate that this is a handball offense, even if it's in the penalty area, because the game demands it and your referee team demands it. And if the referee waves you down because they say, no, 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 that would be a penalty kick and I didn't see it that way, you did your job. Now, the questions that the and the answers are on the referee. But I hope that we as a team can trust one another, that we know we're on this call for a reason, right? To get better, to have a uniform consistency, that we have a level of understanding that when an assistant referee, when it comes back to pregame, they have a detailed pregame as a referee, but when the assistant referee puts the flag up, when you as a referee did not have a good angle of view to determine what had happened, that you would then go with your assistant referee. Now you can call it as a referee and then award a penalty kick, but you as an assistant referee, when you take your position, have to say, hit, ball hit the hit arm, arm in an unnatural position. So as an assistant referee, you have to know these considerations so you can verbalize them to the referee when you're not using comms. And it allows the players to know what, what, why you're calling it. Question, that's a great question. Uh, another question, where should the center referee be positioned in order to see the handball better? Sometimes they're just not a good position. There just isn't a good position to see the handball. The referee here gets caught thinking that it's gonna be a turnover. So their first step is upfield. They take about two steps upfield, thinking it's a counter before they start to move closer to play. So in this case, you may not even have a good angle of view here because of that additional defender that's blocking. So the referee really, really needs the assistant referee to come up and be courageous here with the decision. Lance, there's a great question in the chat from uh, Ed Mason. Where, where should the center referee be positioned in order to see the handball better? So that was what we were just talking about here, right? So like there's not, sometimes there just isn't a good position to be in. There just isn't. 
if the if the referee here is moving to the if the referee moves to her right, she's blocked by that taller defender that's at the top of the penalty area. If the if the referee moves to her left, she's then blocked by the defender that's in the penalty area that's nearest to the defender that handles it. So unless that referee is closer to the penalty area towards the middle of the field and is able to see in between those two defenders that are kind of acting as, uh, as uh, blockers for the referee to not be able to see this handball offense, there really isn't a good position for the referee to be in. But the referee does not do herself any favors by anticipating the turnover that doesn't happen and then puts herself out of position trying to play catch up. So she doesn't create an angle of view in this case because at this point, she's trying to just get back into the frame of play. But it's very difficult. This is a very difficult um, decision to make. We sit here and we analyze the clips like, oh, that's a handball. That's easy. But it's very difficult when you have, you know, plays in the penalty area. That's why your, your awareness has to really, your, I call it your spidey sense, has to really heighten that you have to expect the unexpected. You have to really be dialed in when play is in and around the penalty area. And you have to continue, continue to be dynamic continue to move, continue to find the optimal angle of view. Okay. And, and as Mark said, this referee is really unlucky, but she, she is unlucky, but she didn't do herself any favors either by anticipating the turnover and getting caught. And that happens to all of us, happens to all of us, where we anticipate, anticipate play going one way and it transitions the other way. And then you're having to play catch up. So it, it happens to the best of us and it happens to all of us. One last clip. Oh, no, 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 not this clip. Any clip, but that clip. This clip, this is the clip I want. <laughs> Arguably the, the top player, one of the top players in the world. All right, here we go. Handball or no handball? Handball, it's a, that means it's a foul coming out. No handball means it's a penalty kick. Let's say that again. Lance, can you roll back like three frames? Just keep this. I'm having issues with the stream. So, yeah, I just want to see where I want to see the touch that leads up to that. Touch that leads. Okay. Yeah, like yeah, just there you go. Go forward slowly, like you're doing it. Oh, so it's kind of off the ground then. Okay. Thank you. Kind of looks like a handball to me. He's got that arm stretched out there, trying to get to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, 
All right, let's get a couple more people. Aiden Page or Adin. Sorry if it's Adin or Aiden. James says handball. Coming out. <laughs> So in this case, in this case, we'll keep it short. We'll keep it simple, right? In this case, there's a second movement, a second action to the ball by the hand, right? That second action is, in, is not created by the contact from the defender here. This is the attacking player stretching his arm out to control the ball. Yep, that's what I got. Right. So he's trying a last ditch effort before he gets in there to get one more uh, touch of it. Right. One last touch. Okay. This is Aiden. I think it's not a handball because he did get fouled. Like the defender fouled him and he fell into it. But the clip's kind of choppy, so I'm there. Yeah, it looked, like, it looked like the foul though came after he touched it. So in this case right here, Aiden, you've got we've, we. Uh, I was going to try to freeze it because you've got the defender holding, and you also have the attacker holding. The defender's holding around the arm, the right arm of Halan, and then you've got the Halan's arm holding the Honduras defender around his waist. So when, when they both let go, which they do, the, there is a foul, but it appears to be a tripping foul. But that tripping foul occurs after the handling offense. So it occurs after. So we must punish the handball first. This one's very difficult too, to, to see in live play. You know, the referee, this is another one of these where, where are you going to be? What's the perfect position? Sometimes there just isn't the, the isn't the most, uh, the optimal or the perfect position here. Okay. So if you don't have the right angle of view, you're going to think this was a trip. I also spent like way too much time watching this clip to be, to ask myself where the boundary of the arm was. Um, and if this was like some sort of trick about where the arm is defined as being, uh, but everyone it's, it's the upper armpit. So it does hit his arm. I just really asked myself uh, that if that's what we were trying to get from this clip. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough clip. It's a tough clip that I, pretty much everybody in the, in the chat was able to get here. The assistant referee could have a view here, but still we're talking 45 yards away, maybe 30, 40 yards away here for the assistant referee to get involved. But the assistant referee may have the, you know, optimal angle here to provide assistance. So this was a good one to end on here because we're able to get it correct. So let me go ahead and stop share. So real quickly in the chat, right? Give me, give me a consideration for handball that we learned today. And on that note, we are going to send the considerations out. I know the Academy members have them, but some people don't. And that's part of these calls is the educational aspect of what the considerations are. And Lance has been talking about them all night. When we send out the recording of the call, we will, we will send out the FIFA considerations. And um, the next time you join one of these calls uh, or come to an Academy event, which I highly encourage you to do, we will be in depth with considerations at all times. And then you can download them from US Soccer as well. That is correct, Chuck. So I see, I, I saw some earlier additional movement. Uh, taking a risk, making the body bigger, supporting arm, defender deliberately, or def the defender last playing the ball, 
into a teammate's arm where there's no second action. Okay. The attacker handball concept, we didn't even get into that tonight, where an immediate goal or immediate goal scoring opportunity. Um, so in the supporting arm, supporting arm, when does it become a supporting arm versus when does it become making itself bigger, right? Vertical versus horizontal. So the handball is one of those topics where you could spend three hours on, and we do at the international level to have uniform consistency across the board. So this was just a short hour um, webinar. Uh, I was, I'm really happy with uh, everybody's participation. It was really great to see people in the chat. It was great to see people um, being called on to give their answer and their considerations, people volunteering. This was excellent. So um, thank you very much uh, for, for your attendance, your participation. And uh, I look forward to hopefully one day meeting you all in person. And, uh, and, and please, please, anytime I can help, I'm more than happy to help out. So thank you very much. Leland, back to you, bud. Lance, that was great. Thank you. Um, I know you probably got to drop off. I'm going to stop our recording here, but uh, I'll stay on as long as I can to answer any other follow-up questions. And uh, as I said, Lance, uh, thank you so much, you guys. He, what a resource. And uh, thank you all for joining. I'm just going to stop the recording here and I'll stay on to take questions if we need. And Lance, you stay on as long as you can. And we'll stop the recording here.